G'day everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be EGR blanking this 2019 PX3 Ford Ranger. Now this is the 2.2 litre engine with the DPF. So I'll get a lot of questions in regards to these models and today I'm going to go through and explain the ins and outs of EGR blanking. Normally in my previous videos I talked about the EGR blanking plate which is this here. But I'm going to be doing something different with this car. I'm going to be actually using an EGR blanking module, which is this here, which is the electronic way of doing it. So you can still use the blanking plate if you wanted to on this vehicle, but you would need to drill a seven millimeter hole just to keep all the sensors happy. But we've got to keep in mind that this car is still under warranty. So if we were to put this one in, it would void the warranty by Ford. So that's where this module comes into play. So I paid $208 for this module from a company called Diesel Boss. And it's basically a plug and play unit. And what it does, it closes off the EGR valve completely and tricks the computer to thinking that it's still operating when it really isn't. So I know there's a lot of online hate for these modules. People say that they wreck your car and do all sorts of stuff. But today I'm gonna to be actually put into the test and I'm gonna be using my top scan uh, dongle that I've previously done a video and I'll throw that up in the top right hand corner. So that'll just give us insight of what the sensors are actually doing, such as the EGTs, intake air temps, the EGR valve, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna be road testing the car before I install the module and just having a look at all the sensors and getting all the data and feedback from them. I'm then gonna install the module, then go for another test drive and to see what the sensors are doing once again. So I'm out here in this section of road where I've done a bit of testing previously before. I've got top scan hooked up to my car here and currently displaying the EGR valve position bank. So essentially that's just the EGR valve telling me what percentage it's open at. And as you can see, it's about 34%. Another sensor that I have open and I'm gonna be focusing on is the exhaust gas temp, which hopefully I can find it. It's up here. So it's currently at 170 degrees. So this is the pre-DPF sensor. Um, and the, another sensor that I've got open, which is not really that important, is the air charge temperature. So we're at 23 degrees at the moment. Essentially, that's the temperature in the intake. Uh, so I'll just scroll back to the EGR valve sensor. Where is it? There we go. So I'm gonna start off with this sensor, but as we get to the uphill section, probably switch over to the exhaust gas temp sensor just to see what sort of exhaust gas temps we reach with the car in its standard format before we fit the blanking module to it. So I've already done a video previously demonstrating this sort of stuff with the EGR valve and it's um, pretty much what we're going to see as I accelerate onto the highway the valve is going to completely close. Once I start cruising it'll probably open to about 30-20% um, so if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. I'll throw a link in the top right-hand corner. So surprisingly, the EGR valve on the PX3 seems to be staying open much more than the PX1 because when I accelerated in this part in my previous video, it seemed to be closed consistently, but <clears throat> this one seems to be a lot more open. So it's sitting at about 90 Ks at the moment, and it's about 20%, 22%. So, Currently we're about 340 degrees. Sitting on about 100 k's. Gonna try and maintain that 100 kilometers per hour as we come up this uphill section. hitting about 380 degrees, sitting on about 90 k's per hour.
392 degrees and I think that's what we're pretty much going to max out at EGTs are starting to drop now as we come down the hill so now all I'm going to be doing is installing the EGR module which is pretty easy to do all I'm going to be doing is intercepting this plug here, which is the airflow sensor, and I'm going to be looping it around the back there to the EGR valve plug, which is down here. That's it right there. So it's just a matter of disconnecting that, plugging the module in, and that's basically it. really film that back plug just not enough room to get a camera in there but as you can see it's plugged in and the EGR valve itself is disconnected so all I got to do now is just zip tie that up and start it up so I now have the EGR module fully installed as you can see it's just running down here along this uh, breather pipe down the back there and the instructions did say to keep away from this pipe here so all I've done is just zip tied it back to one of those lines, run it along the top there. And that took a whole of five minutes where if you've ever done a blanking plate, you know that it can take up to about two hours to do. So much quicker to do this way. So I'm going to start the car up and see how it runs. Oh, running very smooth. No error codes, which is good. So time to take it for a test drive. One other thing that I forgot to talk about is fuel consumption. Now my fuel consumption is currently sitting at 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, so we'll go for a drive and see if that drops down. So I'm back in the car now and I've been driving for about half an hour and everything is working as it should. There are no fault codes, no engine lights, nothing like that, no erratic behavior or anything like that from the car. Everything is working 100% as it should. I'm just looking at the uh, EGR valve position at the moment and it's at 36%. So the computer thinks that the EGR valve is still plugged in and working even though it's disconnected and closed because when you disconnect it, it's in the closed position. So that's very good to see. Um, we'll just scroll up to have a look at the um, air charge temperature. So it's at 36 degrees. Obviously it's a bit later in the day now, so it's a bit hotter. Um, ambient temperature is 19 degrees. So that's all working as it should. And now I'll scroll back down and have a look at the exhaust gas temperature. So we're about, we're at 190 degrees steady. So everything is working as it should. All the sensors are working as it should. Everything is operational. Uh, the module has no, had no effect on anything or any of the readings from any of the sensors. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it for a drive back on the same road that I was earlier and see how hot the exhaust gas temperature gets. Uh, because I think last time we seen about 380, 390 degrees. So we'll see now with the module plugged in and the EGR valve disconnected, we'll see if it runs any hotter or any cooler. I'm going to try and maintain the same speed as I was previously, which was about between 90 and 100 degrees. Um, uh, sorry, between 90 and 100 kilometers. Um, so I know there was a car in front of me, which was sort of slowing me down to about, I think it was 90, 95. 
So I'll try and maintain that exact same speed so we get an accurate reading and see what the uh, exhaust gas temperature is doing. So at the moment I'm just sitting on about 100 cruising along and we're at 315 degrees. Just starting to climb now. Sitting on about 95 kilometers per hour. Exhaust gas temps are 330, 340, 345, 350, 355. So it looked like it peaked out at about 355. So that actually looks like the exhaust gas temps have dropped by probably about 30 degrees with the module plugged in. So that's a pretty good sign if you ask me. One other interesting thing, I've just come back from my trip and as you can see, my fuel consumption has dropped down to 9.3. So here are my final thoughts on the EGR module. Seems to be working really well. The car does run a fair bit more smoother. Um, I saw a decrease in fuel consumption. I saw a decrease in exhaust gas temps and everything is working exactly as it should. Now I've just come back from a drive and as you can see here, I can put my hand on that pipe. Normally this would be like hot where you can't put your hand on it. But obviously the EGR valve is staying closed and this here is actually cool to touch. So as you can see down there, the valve itself is disconnected. I would highly recommend this product. Um, very easy to install. It's all just plug and play. And from what I've done, the road testing that you saw in this video, everything works exactly as it should. So until next time, see you guys later.